Hello tarot friends. I hope this finds you well. So today I'm going to record a video um, about March, my March favorites and um, the ups and downs of March. And um, I guess the best way for me to describe March is to say it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I've already tried filming this a couple times, you might be able to see from my face, it's a little bit blotchy because I've been crying. I'm hoping to get through this part with a deep breath. Anyway, the worst of times for us was we had to release our beloved companion, Rusty, to spirit in uh, the beginning of March. Um, Rusty came to us um, nine years ago um, on the uh, summer solstice and uh, he was a rescue and when he arrived he had been neglected so he was really skinny and his fur was all like blotchy like spots of bleached out and the brown from the chocolate lab he didn't even look like a lab like you couldn't even tell what his breed was. He looked so bad. But anyway, we got him on the summer solstice. So we kept thinking, um, okay, what are we going to name him? You know, maybe Sunny or Solstice or, you know, something to do with the solstice. But that didn't quite stick. Just, you know, we were just like, nah, nah, nah. So my partner, Bob, came home from work Um uh, the day that we I picked up Rusty and he walked in the door to meet Rusty and he looked down and he said, oh, he's kind of rusty looking. And we said, ah, that's the name, Rusty. So that was the name that stuck and it was perfect for him. He brought so much joy and happiness to us over the years. And I will always remember him fondly. So I'm sure those of you who have had companion animals can relate to my sadness. And um, I thought that would bring me to the herbs I use this month. So um, I found out many years ago um, when we had to release yet another one of our beloveds, um, a friend of mine told me about a homeopathic remedy called Ignatia. And it's a really, really good remedy for grief. It doesn't mute the grief or, um, um, you know, um, suppress it. What it does is it helps you process the grief and to move through the grief. And I find that it really works incredibly well. So I have been taking Ignatia, the homeopathic remedy this month. And then I've also been taking this wonderful remedy from Avena Herbs in um, Maine. Deb Soul is the um, owner and herbalist there. And it is called Broken Heart Remedy. And you, it's for uh, acute <laughs> episodes. Um, and so what you do is you just take 10 drops several times a day. And in this um, remedy are Hearts Ease Pansy, Lemon Balm, uh, Motherwort, uh, which is Leonaris Car Cardiac, cardiac um, so Lionhearted, and um, Hawthorne. And Hawthorne is... is um, all of those you can see some of them even have heart in their name lemon balm is a soothing calming strengthening the nervous system herb um, heart's ease pansy is just as it says it eases your the your heart hawthorne is a wonderful herb so this has the flower the leaf and the uh, bark in it and um I'm sorry, the flower, the leaf, and the berry uh, of Hawthorne. And um, Hawthorne is a wonderful heart healing herb um, uh, for physical heart ailments, but also emotional or metaphysical 
um, heart pain. Um, so I've been taking that and um, I've been finding it to be working quite well. And then um, I've also been taking a remedy that I make myself, which is rose petal elixir. And it's made from the rose petals of Rosa Ragosa, which is beach rose, which grows wild all over Cape Cod where I live. But I have a huge stand of it in my yard. So I, um, when the roses come into bloom, I pick the petals every day, all day long, as long as they're in season. And I make rose glycerin um, from it. I've talked about it ad nauseum. Um, before, so I'm, I'm not gonna belabor it, but um, it really is um, amazing. Again, it's, um, it's a heart healing on both uh, physical and metaphysical and emotional levels. So um, I recommend those things all highly. Um, so that was the worst of things. I also had my birthday in March, uh, I'm in Aries, March 23rd, so just after the equinox. In the past two years, my birthday has been quite uneventful because of the pandemic. The, um, in 2020, um, the pandemic had just begun and we were really just a, a week or so into the pandemic when my birthday rolled around and I was um, actually... Um, really isolated. Um, so I had a Zoom birthday cake at the end of the day, um, but it was, you know, uneventful and that's the way it goes. And last year it was uneventful too. And again, whatever. But this year I had kind of like a birthday uh, by week, <laughs> two week. I went with my sister who really was wonderful and celebrating my birthday with me. Um, and I had a massage and we went for some nice walks and I got new glasses. I'm not wearing them. They haven't arrived yet. Um, and we went out to lunch and then another day we went out to tea, afternoon tea, which, um, is a big thing for me because of my, um, heritage. My grandparents were both born in Scotland and tea is like a big thing in our family. You know, anytime there's a crisis or a celebration or people stop by, oh, let's make tea. But beyond that, afternoon tea is um, really a meal. So, you know, it comes with little sandwiches and scones and clotted cream and jam and little special desserts. And um, so that was quite enjoyable. Um, I loved that. And it, uh, it connects me to my um, ancestors and um, it's just a special thing. So that was really fun. And then a couple days after my birthday, uh, my um, my partner, Bob, surprised me with a little uh, gathering at our house. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law came and my sisters came and some other friends of ours came. And, oh, we drank some really lovely wine and had beautiful food. And it was just, it was really great. Um, it was nice to get gather with friends and feel safe about it and um, to just enjoy life. So that was my birthday. So worst of times, best of times. Now to um, the cards. Well, let's see. So um, I did a video and I spoke about this um, a while ago um, that I um, decided in January um, to um, pick um, a bunch of decks that I want to really get to know better this year. So I picked 12, uh, six Oracle and six Tarot. Um, and I've begun to work with them. I worked with the Star Tarot in um, January and enjoyed that immensely. What a great deck, what a great guidebook. Um, so that was nice. And then I have been, um, the Oracle that I started working with is this one. Threads of Fate Shadow Edition. And I decided with this one, you you can't, uh, I can't pull um, a lot of cards 
frequently. So this is going to be a deck that I'm really working with throughout 2022. And I think, um, so now we're at the um, beginning of April, the end of March, and I think I've probably pulled maybe six or seven cards. But the one I pulled um, right around the spring equinox was this card, Power. And I thought, wow, that's so perfect for, it's a, it's a fire uh, sign. Um, the cards in this deck ha are divided up into um, the four elemental um, and also ether, so five suits. Um, anyway, this is uh, power. And when you pull a card, uh, you go can go to the guidebook and it talks a little bit about the card itself. It gives you an exercise to do. And then it connects with that card an animal, a plant, and a crystal. So um, for this card, Power, we have um, the animal is bear. So I actually had this bear, car it's a card that someone sent me, but I've saved it because I just love it so much. Um, so I put this bear on my uh, altar. And then the um, herb was uh, California poppy. So I pulled this from the herb crafters. And then the crystal was citrine. Um, and so I, I pulled this out. This is a um, beautiful citrine tower that I got from Patrick at The Living Wheel. He has uh, crystal sales, live crystal sales on Instagram from time to time. So I thought I would just say, I, I found this all connecting to the equinox so perfectly. Um, so let me just kind of uh, speak to that. So um, bear, of course, bears come out from their um, states of torpor and we call it hibernation um, around uh, this time of year. And so bear in this book says, bear teaches us that understanding and working with our personal cycles amplifies our personal power. Um, so they, she, they go on to talk a little bit about uh, balance and um, the power of bear. And um, really, if you think of a mama bear uh, protecting her cubs, you can really not envision many things more powerful than that. So uh, California poppy, um, I thought, was particularly good for me right now because it is a really powerful nervine and I have been having some trouble with sleeping lately and so I actually don't have any uh, California poppy on hand. I'm going to get some but I'll be taking that and working with that and then I thought I'd talk a little bit about what they say about citrine. So, well, so California poppy uh, is a guide for us when we feel disconnected from our personal power during trying times. It teaches us how to ground into our feelings and experiences, despite how painful they may be, and in the strengthening of our container. So, as I mentioned, I am going through a challenging time right now, so California poppy is, is probably a pretty good herb for me to work with. And then citrine, which I had out on my altar because I really think of citrine as um uh, an airy season crystal anyway. So citrine is all about getting things done. It strengthens our determination, will, and ability. Um, it's fiery energy, clears our power centi center of any feelings of unworthiness and encourages us to take action. Call upon citrine when you need help clearing any blockages. So I think that these, um, this card and the allies that go along with this card are pretty perfect. Um, so let me now move on and talk a little bit about Spring Equinox. So, of course, um, I will have to mention my um, beloved Living Wheel. Um, and um, at Spring Equinox, I got to change out the card from the wintry looking Imolk to this lovely um, Spring Equinox card. And 
I look at that and I see plantain, and I'm not sure if that's what Patrick intended or not. I should probably ask him, but um, that looks like plantain to me, and I'm beginning to see plantain um, coming up uh, in my yard. It grows wild all over the place, um, and it is a really great um, skin herb. So, um, a couple days ago, so the sun moved into Aries, yay. I love Aries time of year. So powerful and energetic and fiery and I just love it. So the sun is in Aries. And then a couple days ago, we just had the new moon. And so we had the new moon in Aries. So we had the new moon and the sun in Aries, um, the equinox, and I had my power card and I was, um, thinking about um, spring equinox and Aries, and I got this vision in my head of the Ace of Wands from the Mother Peace card. And I thought, wow, does that ever um, express the spring equinox? So we have this egg, which of course we think of eggs as new beginnings and birthing um, new projects um, at this time of year. But the egg has burst open. The fire is pouring out. And this being is like, woohoo, I am ready to take life on. I am ready for new beginnings, new projects, new adventures, new feelings. And I just feel like this is such a great card for this time of year for this spring equinox so this has also been out on my um altar um i did pull a card from the moon oracle moon deck i think it's called um for the new moon in aries and i got this one movement and it says movement awakens my creative spirit so I thought that fit right into the whole ball of wax that I've been uh, just talking about. Because yes, it's spring, uh, it's time, it's warming up, it's time to move and, and get your creative juices going and go out in nature and let nature inspire us and spark our creativity. Um, I pulled uh, an animal card from the messenger cards right around spring equinox and I got balance. So balance, I think we think about balance at the e equinox because we have equal day and equal night twice a year. Um, so I thought that was kind of a, a good card. And then um, I pulled this um, card out of the Earth Balance Oracle. I think it's a beautiful card. This is out on my um, altar as well. I have a lot of cards out of my altar right now. And then um, I just wanted to share this one. I don't, I felt the need or want or desire to pull a card from the Sassa Burrito the other day. Um, I do love that deck. And I pulled this one, the Eight of Cups. And if any of you watching this have have or have had long hair, you can really relate to this symbolism. So I actually um, did not take this card uh, figuratively. I took it literally. It had been a year and a half since I had had a haircut. It was a scraggly mess, y'all. But anyway, I got this card and I burst out laughing and I just went and got my haircut. So I have a nice new haircut for spring. Very lovely. Um, so now I wanna talk about decks. So I did a whole video on decks for spring and several of those decks I've been working with uh, in March. Um, and so I don't wanna talk too much about those, but one of them is this lovely uh, deck by um, Brant Palazzo called Moon Baby. It's, um, he, uh, I guess, reformatted the uh, Hoi Polloi. And I just pulled these cards out because I thought they were kind of springy. There we have the Ace of Wands again. And then of course, the Two of Wands and Three of Wands are the cards we that are um, the deacons that are associated with Aries. 
Um, I thought this Empress was lovely. My card of the month um, this month is the, I'm sorry, in April, now I am in April, is Three of Cups. Um, and I just thought these were lovely spring colors. Um, lovely deck. I've been enjoying working with that deck. Uh, also in March, so this is slightly embarrassing. So uh, anyway, this is the deck. I'm not going to try to be suspenseful about this Victorian romantic. So, um, you know, when it first came out, I saw people gushing over it and fawning over it. And I just, I saw, I watched videos on it. I saw people post on it. And I thought, I don't know, doesn't really speak to me. So I never ordered it. And I think it went from a first edition to a second edition to a third edition. I think this one now is the fourth edition. So Baba Studios uh, made an announcement that they were coming out with a fourth edition of um, the Victorian Romantic. And I hemmed in hot and they were gonna have like a special um, pricing until the middle of January or something. And I hemmed in hot and hemmed in hot. So, you know, time went by and now um, I realize, oh, do I want to order this deck? Because if I do, this is like the last day before the special sale price ends or whatever. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I was like, you know what, Liz? This deck doesn't really speak to you. Don't order it. You're just ordering it for FOMO or whatever. Oh, they might not print it again. Okay, well, whatever. I have plenty of decks. It's really fine. I can live without it. So um, I didn't order it. So then, uh, so that was in January. So then uh, in March, I get this email, your package is on its way. And I'm thinking, my package is on its way. What package? I didn't order anything. I decided not to order Victorian Romantic. Well, apparently I did order Victorian Romantic when the announcement first came out. I don't really remember doing that. <laughs> this is the emb embarrassing part. Thank God I didn't order it a second time and then I would have two decks. But anyway, I ordered it. It arrived. It's beautiful. I love it. And of course, oh, can you see the coal foil? Yeah, you kind of can. Oh, yay. Um, so I'm just pulling out. I, I, these first three cards... Um, Moon card is always one of my favorite cards. I love Seven of Wands. And he's in a kilt. Yay for my Scottish heritage. Six uh, of Swords. I'm sorry, did I say? Yeah, Six of Swords is also one of my favorite m minor cards. And I think that's a gorgeous rendition of it. I think you can see the co uh, foil stamping. It's just, it's beautiful. Uh, I'm really loving it. I haven't really read with it yet. I'm just kind of looking through it and shuffling it um, and um, just kind of enjoying it. Oh, I love this. This is a page of cups. Oh, and this page of swords, 10 of wands, eight of cups, Interesting, interesting tower card. Queen of Swords. I'm trying to get that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure most of you have seen this. Queen of Pentacles and uh, Ace of Cups. It's, it's beautiful. So when it first arrived, I thought to myself, why did I do that? Why did I order that deck? I, I don't really want that deck. But you know what? Uh, I'm really glad I did. So I also got the book. And I think the book is really good to have with this deck because it talks about the paintings that each card came from. And I think that's really um, helpful. Um, in, um, and maybe not helpful, but just interesting to see where the paintings came from and how... Karen and Alex manipulated them and changed them to suit the cards. Um, I am not always the biggest fan of collage decks, but I think this one is 
pretty seamless. You know, sometimes you can see how they're kind of put together and this one is pretty seamless. So um, I'm going to be working with that for the month of April, um, continuing from uh, March, and I have really been enjoying it. Um, and let's see, oh, one other deck I wanted to mention. So as I uh, talked about earlier, um, I, in January, the beginning of January, I decided to pick uh, 12 decks that I was going to do kind of deep dives, you know, decks that I've had and um, felt like I really needed to get to know. Either I hadn't used them at all, or I hadn't used them much, or I hadn't really explored uh, explored them. So um, one of those decks was Tarot Divine. Um, and it's a deck that um, features characters from fairy tales from around the world. And I got the deck. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, and I have used it uh, quite a bit. But I haven't really explored the fairy tales. So I got the book, which has kind of a, maybe a synopsis of the fairy tale, a picture of the card and a synopsis or an overview of the fairy tale on one page. So I thought, you know, if I, if I did a deep dive or I did an exploration of it, I could you know, maybe get through the 78 cards over the course of the year. So in February, I started um, to do that. And about five or six days into it, I just thought, nope, it's not a deep dive deck for me right now. Uh, Mary, maybe if I researched the fairy tales, it would become a deep dive, but the, uh, the actual one page overview of the uh, fairy tales didn't feel deep to me. And I thought, I don't really care about fairy tales that much. Um, so whoop, off the deep dive list you go. I am not going to deep dive you. Put that back in my uh, tarot shelving, and I decided a couple weeks later to replace it with this one, the Tabula Mundi by M. M. Moline. I've had this since I think 2016. I picked it up at a tarot conference. I bought it right from M. M. Moline, and it comes in this lovely box with a uh, a little uh, guidebook and a, a ribbon to pull it out. It is um, thought-based. And um, last year, um, I decided, you know what? I consider myself a student of tarot. And so I'm going to study the thought desk. Even though I can't abide Alistair Crowley, I will try to separate him from the deck. So I got um, uh, Lon Milo Duquette's book, which, you know, was okay. Then through that kind of rabbit hole, I found Angelus Arian's book, which I really liked. But I just, I couldn't connect. It just didn't speak to me. Um, and I thought, you know, I do consider myself a student of tarot and I want to um, explore and learn about kind of those foundational um, decks. The Marseille, Rider Waite Smith, uh, Thoth. Um, but then I thought, you know, um, one thing about being an Aries is we are always curious and interested in the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Always want to keep learning always interested in learning new things. Um, and so I have a jagundo list of things I want to study and learn more about. So I thought, why should I spend, why should I force myself to spend time studying something that I am not, it's not really speaking to me. So for the time being, I, I even bought a greenie. I got a thankfully, a really good price on a really nice, uh, good greenie in good shape. Uh, it was the uh, 1978 um, version. Um, so I, I have that and I have the several books and I'm just going to put it aside for now. And I thought if I want to get into that system, I'll see what M.M. Maline has to say. So for now, this is my 
um, replacement deep dive deck. Um, and I am starting to read the guidebook. She's a good writer. She's a great artist. Let me just show you. So it comes with this title card. And you can see the rosy cross there. Um, which is, of course, on the back of the Thoth deck. I just pulled out two cards. The Fool. So if you look at this Fool, he is not about to walk off a cliff. They're about to walk off and jump down into the space-time continuum. I'm kind of loving that. And then one of my all-time favorite Empress cards. So... I would like to have this deck just for this card alone. Uh, I just love it. So that's the um, M.M. Moline Tabula Mundi that I'm doing, going to be doing a deep dive on. Um, this is another deck, uh, Spirit Keeper's Revelation, that I pulled out as I thought it was a springy deck, and I've been doing some um, readings with that. And then um, in March, because it is... International Women's Herstory Month. Um, I, for the past several years, I pulled one card a day from our tarot, which is a feminist tarot, celebrating 78 um, different women across uh, time and cultures and the globe and so forth. But this year, um, over the past, uh, last year, I should say, this deck uh, came into my possession, Roar by M.J. Cullinane. She's the Crow Tarot person. So I decided I'd pull a card a day from the Roar deck. I didn't end up doing that. I, I don't, I think it was just with Rusty dying and everything, I just, uh, I don't know, I couldn't do it. But these were some of the cards I pulled. So this one is Mary Coffin Ware Dennett. And I didn't notice it when I first pulled it. I didn't see it. I just thought, oh, who's this woman? I don't know her. But if you see that, is a vagina, a cervix, a uterus, and fallopian tubes. And then this is a wheel of birth control pills. So this woman, Mary Coffin Ware Dennett, was a fighter for the rights of women to have birth control. And she broke laws. She was a real activist um, in this uh, arena. And um, this is a, an area that is near and dear to my heart. My grandmother was also an activist. Um, it, she's in the 20s for not only women's suffrage, but for women's rights to be uh, to take to have access to birth control. My grandmother was a member of the Rhode Island Birth Control League. I mean, I think it might have even been illegal back then, but anyway. Um, and so I uh, have worked in women's health, uh, public health, my whole life. When I first started in my career, I worked at a Title X family planning clinic, um, actually several, one on the North Shore of Boston, and then for Boston Family Planning Project, and then I moved to Cape Cod, and I worked for a family planning program down here. So this is near and dear to my heart, so I loved finding out about her. The second, uh, or another woman that is in this deck that I adore, is Julia Child. Um, she is, I'm sure you all know her, and when I think of the industry that she really more or less birthed, I mean, there's a whole food network. There's people who are making fortunes from having food shows and, um, you know, uh, food, not just cooking shows, but, um, you know, what's that guy, diners, drives, and drive-ins, or whatever. I mean, there's just, it's crazy. And it was started by, that whole genre was started by this wonderful woman, Julia Child. No, Julia was a wonderful woman. She lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and did her show on WGBH Public Television. 
I grew up watching these shows on Channel 2 because I am from the Boston area. Um, and um, one of the things that I, I, I do love to cook, um, I'm not sure that it's necessarily because of uh, Julia, but maybe. Um, but one of the things I learned from Julia Child that I think is important for all of us who cook uh, to learn, she said, when you're putting a meal down, when you've cooked for people, maybe things didn't come out quite right, but never apologize. Just put the meal down and present it and let people eat. And I do have a tendency to say, oh, this didn't come out exactly right. No, no. Isn't it delicious? Wasn't it nice of me to cook a meal for you? So Julia Child, whoops. Another of my beloveds is this wonderful woman, Audre Lord. Rachel Carson. Octavia Butler. Maya Angelou. Maria Tallchief. Um, first Native American. Um, Prima Ballerina for the National Ballet, Billie Holiday, Shirley Chisholm, and my beloved Pamela Coleman Smith. So those were the cards that I uh, came out with for Women's History Month. And I think that is it. Ooh, it is. Thank you for joining me. If you stuck through this lengthy blabathon, thank you. Um, what are some decks that you worked with in March? Or, oh, I didn't get to my books. Oh, well, there aren't that many. I'll just merge them into April. Um, what books did you read? Or what decks did you use? Or what wonderful events did you partake of in this wonderful month of March? Thank you so much. I appreciate um, you all stopping by my channel. Happy spring to all.